It's time for the Godly Woman's Guide with Terry Temple. Hello, ladies. Welcome to the Godly Woman's Guide. I'm your host, Terry Temple. I hope you all are doing great. We're going to have a great time today. I have a lot of uh, great information to share with you today. A lot of great information. I'm going to be sharing with you how to stay godly when being abused. How to stay godly when being abused. Uh, I'm doing this lesson because someone asked me to teach a, to teach on this topic. So that's one reason I'm doing this lesson. Also, many Christians have come from abusive home environments. So that's another good reason that I want to uh, cover this lesson. And so <clears throat> we'll understand uh, how to handle it the way that God desires and from a godly perspective. So let's hear God's word on the matter. Uh, before I get started, I did want to let you all know that coming up Saturday, August 13th, Saturday, August 13th this year, the 2016 Godly Women's Conference at the Bright Angel Church of Christ in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm inviting you all out. This is my personal invitation to you. My personal invitation to you, precious woman of God, to come out and to see me live in person speak uh, directly, specifically for and to godly women and those who desire to be godly women and who want to be uplifted and encouraged. So that's Saturday, August 13th, this year, the 2016 Golly Women's Conference. We're also having a family fun showcase for the entire family, beginning a few, beginning immediately right after that on the same day. It's uh, free entry, free food, and free entertainment. Uh, gospel recording artist Tiffany Malone will be uh, performing there. She's going to open up the conference for me. And we're going to have a uh, Christian comedian, Jabrian, is going to be there. Oh, this is awesome. And we're going to have free food, free prizes, door prizes. Make sure you register. Go to my website and make sure you re register at terrytemple.org. Go to my website and register. We're going to be giving away free, uh, free door prizes to everyone who registers. And if also, if you want to come to the brunch, we're going to have a brunch at 1230, and it's free. But if you want to come to that, you have to register, okay? And I want to see you all there. I want to see you all, and you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. So I want to see you there, and I, I want you all to come out, okay? And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. So so now, let's get to our lesson. Let's get to our lesson. So my lesson is how to stay godly when being abused. How to stay godly when being abused. And I just want to let you all know that I miss you. I know I haven't been on air in a while, and Satan did his best to keep me down and to stop me from being here today. He did his best. So praise the Lord, I'm here, and uh, I want to stay here because I love encouraging women. This is my God-given gift and talent. I hope, I believe, and, and I want to use it. So according to the U.S. Death Thesaurus, according to the U.S. Death Thesaurus, abuse means the same as mistreatment, cruelty, neglect, or exploitation mistreatment cruelty neglect or exploitation that's the same thing as abuse it may involve violence and or verbal emotional and mental abuse it may involve violence and or verbal emotional and mental abuse personally I was abused growing up I was bullied I've shared my testimony many times with you all. I was abused by uh, some family members and some friends. One of my best friends, uh, she uh, abused me all the time. Not physically, but mentally. Mentally and verbally. But uh, So anyway, so I have, I have learned a lot from being, abused, from being abused. You know, being abused, it doesn't feel good. It hurts. It hurts. I was hurt. When I was abused many years ago, I was, you know, I was hurt, and it's, uh, you know, it's no fun. It's no fun, and, it, you know, life is hard enough. Life is hard enough, and it's even harder when we have, when we are being abused. So, I know firsthand that it's not easy, you know, when we are being abused. You know, I know firsthand what it feels like, and I know that it's not easy. So, that's one, you know, reason I want to help share with you today. You know how to handle being abused and how to stay godly when it happens to you. Although Jesus never sinned and he was abused to the point of death, 
I do not believe it was easy for him either. I don't believe it was easy for him yet. He pulled it off and so can we when we follow him. We can be successful in any area of our lives when we do what Jesus did and we follow him. Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So, as I stated before, I was abused verbally and physically almost every day while growing up for many years. Also in my marriage, in the uh, early stages of my marriage, I was also abused. Um, my husband was unfaithful to me and to God, and that is a form of abuse. That is a form of abuse. So, so during those times of abuse in our lives, it's hard to maintain godliness, but it could be done. It could be done. I have a hard time trying to be godly. Uh, I've been married 34 years this past. Matter of fact, this month, I celebrated my 34th wedding anniversary. And I have been, I have committed my life to God. I mean, totally surrender and committed my life to God almost uh, almost 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago is going on now. So, so, you know, it's been hard, but it can be done. It can be done. So I'm going to share with you how to handle being abused from a godly perspective, from a divine perspective perspective you know exactly what what would God say to us if we're being abused what would God say to us that's what I'm going to share to you with you today what would God say what would God do what would Jesus do so the first step to staying godly when being abused is to pray for strength to endure and for the abuser pray for strength to endure and also pray for your abuser it takes a lot of strength to put up with abuse it takes a lot of strength. People who stay in abusive relationships, we see them as a weakly. Nothing could be further from the truth. That is a strong person. That is a strong person. So if you are in any type of abusive relationship, you are a strong woman. You are a strong woman. You are a strong person because only strong people can deal with that. Only a strong person, okay? So try to remember that. You're not a weakly. So... So if you're being abused, you're, you're, you're going to need lots of help. You're going to need lots of help, and that's what prayer is going to do. Prayer is going to give you the help that you need. Okay? You're going to need lots of help. And prayer is going to give you help that you, that you need. But God is love, and he loves to help us. That's the great news. God is love, and he loves to help us, and he's going to help you. Okay? God is going to help you. You are not alone. God's not going to leave you by yourself. I know it seems like you're alone, but you're not. Okay? God loves his children. God loves his children and he loves you. Okay? So so go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer and ask him to give you the strength and the wisdom to endure. Okay? Because it's not going to be easy. It never is. And also we should pray for the abuser and, and hopes that they'll repent. Okay? Whether we stay with them or not, we want to pray for them because the Bible tells us to pray for our enemies and those who persecute us. So that's what I want you to do. That's what God wants you to do, more importantly. So the second step to stay in godly when being abused is to, to surround yourself with godly people who will support you. Surround yourself with godly people who will support you. You want to do that. When my marriage was on the rocks and I was struggling, for the most part, I suffered in silence. I suffered in silence like most women do. I suffered in silence. However, I did keep attending church. I did keep going to Bible classes. I did keep, you know, working on my relationship with God. I never gave up on my relationship with God. As a matter of fact, I worked harder on my relationship with God. And that's what gave me the strength to endure. So, so that's, that'll help you. You, you got to surround yourself and be with uh, godly people. You don't want to be by yourself. A lot of people who are abused, they isolate themselves. Or they allow the abuser to isolate them. And do your best to try to get out of a situation, you know, as far as uh, where you're isolate, isolated. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's easy because I know none of, none of this is easy. Okay? So, if so, but if you have godly friends, that's great. If you have some godly friends, you can confide in, that's great. But just be careful. Some people like to gossip and spread your business. Okay? So just be careful about that. With that, just be careful. The third step to stay in golly when being abused is to turn the other cheek and refuse to lash out. Turn the other cheek and refuse to lash out. Go with me, Bibles, to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, verses 39. It's in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew chapter 5, verses 39. Let's, let's read what Jesus has to say. Let's see what our Lord and Savior has to say on the matter. 
Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verses 39, But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil, but whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. This is the King James Version that I'm reading. So Jesus is saying, you know, in that passage that we are not to fight back when others try to do us harm. In general, we are not to try to fight back. And I know some people think I'm crazy for saying this, right? Well, Jesus said it. I'm just kind of reciting what he's saying. But... Also, for instance, according to the laws in the United States of America, if you live in the United States of America, if someone attacks you, you do not have a right to hit them. Did you know that? If someone came up to you and balled up their fist and was going to punch you, by law, you cannot hit them back. Only if they back you into a corner. If, if you're in a corner and there's no way out, then you can fight your way out. But according to the laws in the United States of America, if someone attacks you, even if they hit you, by law, you cannot hit them back. You have to call the police or you have to run away. That's the laws in the United States. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that, but that's the laws of the United States. So, so this, this, that's the only time we're allowed to defend ourselves. It's literally when our backs are up against the wall. Also, according to Romans chapter 12, verses 21, the way to overcome evil is with good and not more evil. The only way to overcome evil is with good and not more evil. Let's go there to Romans chapter 12, verses 21. See your New Testament, Romans chapter 12, verses 21. Romans chapter 12. Verses 21, and it reads, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So that's what that passage is telling us. That the way to win and conquer evil is only by doing good, not by doing more bad. Okay? So you don't want to be like I was when I was growing up. You know, with my husband, or when I first got married, I mean. When I, was, when I first got married, what I did was... I would, uh, uh, when my husband would upset me or something like that, then I would uh, fight back. You know, I would argue and bigger, pick up the remote, throw the remote at him. I would do stuff like that. You know, that's what I would do. And, and that's not good. That's not good. We're not supposed to retaliate. Christians don't retaliate. We're not supposed to. Okay, ladies? So I know many don't like to hear this. I know many, I know many of you don't like to hear this, especially in our world today. Okay, but this is God's answer. This is God's answer, the best answer to solving our problems. If I had fought against my abusers and those who bullied me, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. I'd probably be in jail somewhere. Because a lot of my friends and everything that fought and everything, they thought they was big and tough. And I'm not going to let nobody push me around or bully me and all this stuff. People like that, they went to jail, got kicked out of school, all this stuff. And they used to look at me when I was growing, when I was in uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. I, I, I would, people didn't really physically hit me a lot. A few times I did get in some fights. I didn't have choices, jumped on me. But uh, <laughs> uh, 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 people would pick and try to start fights and they would try to provoke me to get violent. They would try to provoke me to get violent and I refused to get violent. I refused to get violent, so I would just be quiet, and I would ignore them, but I would not get violent. So, And, and some of my friends, they, they used to call me a bully or stupid, or, oh, you're just a wimp, and stuff like that. No, I just didn't want to fight. I just didn't want to fight. I didn't think they were worth fighting. I don't think anybody's worth fighting. I don't think anybody's worth me going to jail over or getting in trouble. So I just, you know, I just don't do that. So... But I'm, I'm glad that I was wise enough, even though I wasn't a Christian back then, I'm glad that I was wise enough to turn the other cheek. So, in general, we mankind, we do not know how to solve problems. We don't. This is why we need God and Jesus. We don't know how to solve problems, social, medical, or financial included. We don't really know how to solve problems. That's why this world is just in a, a big mess. Some people are gifted in those areas to a certain extent, but overall, in general, we don't know how to solve problems. So, this is why God gave us Jesus. And the Bible, and we do well to follow the advice there. The fourth step to staying godly when being abused is to put up boundaries. Is to put up boundaries. I highly encourage you to get the book Boundaries 
by Cloud and Townsend. If you are being abused in any way, shape, or form, physically or verbally, you will love this book. You will love this book. I, I was uh, uh, given this book at a Bible class lesson uh, where I worship and changed my life. Changed my life. So, so that's what I did many years ago when my husband was being unfaithful and he refused to repent uh, and commit his life to God. I put in my boundaries. I put in my boundaries. I refused to allow him to continue to disrespect me and I separated from him. I literally separated. Did not get a divorce, but I literally separated from him. I moved away, moved out of town. I was, you know, sad to do what needed to be done. And it worked. It worked. And so I'm glad I did what I needed to do. So at the time, it was the only way I could get him to take me seriously. And sometimes that's what we got to do. Sometimes, you know, that's what we got to do to get people to take us seriously is we got to distance ourselves or we got to remove ourselves or remove them from our presence. And not only in marriages, just, you know, basically any type of relationship where you're being abused. So, however, I'm happy to say that by the grace of God, by the grace of God, it all worked out. Today, my husband is a faithful man. He's committed his life to God. And I have no doubt that me obeying God and me being faithful to God and using God's wisdom instead of my own worldly way that I tried to fix my marriage for years and constantly, constantly, constantly failed until I finally got a clue and said, okay, let me do it God's way. My way has failed over and over again, so now I'm going to try to do it God's way. And that's what I did. So, so you know, I speak a lot about my husband. I talk a lot about my husbands because I want women to learn. I want my experiences, the things that I went through, and him as well. He's the same way he's a minister to today. And that's what we want to do. We want to use our life stories, you know, our struggles, things that we, you know, had to go through. We want to use those to help other people, other Christians, or those who are seeking God or seeking a better life. We want to help them, and that's what God wants all of us to do. God wants all of us to do that, but, but I have to say, overall, my husband, he's a good man. He's an extremely good man, and that's one reason I fought so hard to save my marriage, because he's a good man. But he, just like most men, you know, he, he wasn't raised in a Christian home. He was raised in a, a worldly Christian home, but he wasn't raised in a Christian home, just like I was, and so we didn't really know Neither one of us. We didn't know how to be married people. So we, we both brought a lot of baggage into our marriage. But we had one important ingredient, and that was God, and helped to keep us together. Because I believe God's the one that put us together. And God God's word says, what well, he has joined together, let no man separate. So I'm grateful for that, but I just wanted to say, you know, I just wanted to let you know that. So, you know, so... So by putting up my boundaries, it's been a huge, a huge blessing in my marriage. So I encourage you to do the same. Whatever relationship you're in, if you're being abused, you have to put up your boundaries. If it's a so-called friend that's abusing you or a sibling or someone like that, you have to put up your boundaries. So that's why I encourage you to get the book Boundaries. It's going to give you tips, step-by-step -step tips. It's a very in-depth book on how to just, you know, demand respect but in a gentle manner like manner so so you can stop being abused the fifth step to staying godly when being abused is to put yourself in the abuser's shoes put yourself in your abuser's shoes and remember that those who abuse usually have been abused themselves they have usually been abused themselves like I said in my marriage in the very beginning I wasn't a good wife I wasn't I'm not proud of it but I wasn't a good wife and I believe one of the reasons was because I grew up in an abusive environment I grew up in an abusive environment with just a mother, and, she, you know, I can't even really blame her because, you know, we, we sit around in life and we try to blame people. But you know what? If you keep blaming people, you're going to go back generation, 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 generation. And eventually, you're going to go back to Adam and Eve and Satan because he's the real culprit. And it's just all this evil in the world, and we just, you know, we try to get right with God and Jesus. This is why God calls us into the church so he can fix us all because we're all messed up i believe every family is dysfunctional some just more than others but this is why we need jesus so basically i learned i learned when i took the class the boundary class i realized it was an eye opener but i'm glad i learned this lesson that the reason i was i was a, a spoiled wife was mostly spoiled the reason i was a spoiled wife was because i had been abused myself and so I and I was I had a lot of anger and resentment built up. And so by the time I got with my husband, and he truly loved me, by the time I got with him, it's like boom, you know, I just like uh, exploded because so many years I had held in all that abuse 
for like 18 years. I held in all the abuse, like I said, because I never went around attacking people. I just let people beat on me or pick on me or whatever, and I would just walk away. So, so finally, and this is what happens a lot of time to abusers. They just snap or explode. Unfortunately, some of them snap a little too hard and wind up ruining their lives or whatever like that. But, you know, of course, we don't want to do that. But, you know, this, this is why we need God and Jesus. So, so uh, you know, so a lot of abusers, they've been abused before. And I think that's why it's good for us to be merciful and kind toward them and other people because we don't know people's past, you know. So, so just try to put yourself in their shoes. And, and, and when you see a person that's, that's abusive or being abusive to you, just ask yourself a question and just say, I wonder if they've been abused. I wonder. And then maybe ask them if you get the chance. And, the, you know, so maybe ask them. So the, and the seventh step to stand godly when being abused is to keep your faith and remember God will reward you. Keep your faith and remember God will reward you. Go with me in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 19. Let's go in our Bibles. Psalm chapter 19. 19 verses 11. Psalm 19, 11. That's one of my favorite books. I love Psalms. If you ever get depressed or down, read Psalms. Just read as many chapters as you can. I have a few favorites in there, but this book never fails, never fails to lift my spirits, never. Psalm 1911 reads, Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. And he's talking about God's word. He's talking about God's word. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Also, Psalm 3123, 3123, Psalm 3123, it reads, O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, and plentifully rewarded the proud doer. And he's telling like the child of God, a faithful child of God. So according to those passages, when we remain faithful, God will reward us in due time. I'm telling you, he will reward you. He will reward you. You know, it was not easy for me to do, you know, to stay faithful in my marriage. It was not easy for me to stay faithful because I thought God had big plans for my life for me and my husband. But my husband was proving me wrong by his actions. You know, like I said, he's changed now. He's, he's a new man today. But back then, it was so hard. It was so hard because, you know, I, I, I just, I believed one thing. I thought God had given me a vision on what he wanted me to do in the kingdom, me and my husband, everything. But my, my God had one vision and my husband's doing something else. And I'm like, this can't go together. What's going on? So I was really confused. I was really, really confused. So this is why we do well to remember the Bible passage that says, the righteous walk by faith, not by sight. The righteous walk by faith, not by sight, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So we do well to do that. We do well to do that. So if I had kept my faith up, if I had kept my faith up and I let my faith do and do, during those storms and crises in my life and in my marriage, I, I didn't keep my faith, faith up as strong as I should have. And because of that, I got discouraged and a little bit depressed. And that's not good because it's not from God. It's not from Jesus. Being discouraged and depressed is not good. So, so you know, so we do well to to uh, keep our faith up and remember God is going to reward you for hanging in there. And I have no doubt God has rewarded me and 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 blessed my marriage. And now I have a beautiful marriage with a beautiful man. And we both, you know, because I didn't run away and because I followed God's advice. You know, I know I'm speaking in general. And I know some some marriages probably won't be saved but in general okay in general you know we have to stick with God's word and even if we think you know we say well I don't know about my marriage I don't know if my relationship or whatever can be saved you don't know we still have to give God's word a chance a try because we don't know we don't know what God could do and I just think man what if I just had ran away and stayed away you know that would have been good so God has rewarded me for my faithfulness and I have no doubt that he will reward you as well you know, God is love, 1 John 4, 8, and he loves us and God is faithful. And when God tells us to do something in his word and, and we're doing it, 
we're going to be rewarded. And not only after this, not only in heaven, but on this life too, because, because God is faithful. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. So, so thank you, ladies. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson on how to stay godly. How to stay godly when being abused. And like I said, I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. And I probably should have mentioned, get professional help. Seek family counseling. Don't try to go it alone. You know, even if you just have to get counseling for yourself. And, 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 and try to get counseling for your family member. A lot of us, we don't do that. I have no idea why I did not think to go get counseling for myself. Or marriage counseling. I did it years later. But I should have did it a long time ago. And I, don't, I do not know why I did not think of it. I just like... What happened? I have a brain blockage. <laughs> I don't know. It's like I just did not think of it, and it's crazy. And so that's why I'm, that's why I'm telling you: get help, get counseling. If not just for yourself, for the abuser, for your family, whatever, get some help. Okay, don't try to go it alone. Don't try to go it alone. So if you have any questions or any prayer requests, please give me a call: 702-785-1884, or send me an email: terrytemple5 at aol.com. Go to my website, terrytemple.org. I really look forward to hearing from you. And please also go to my website and sign up for my uh, free digital magazine, The Golly Woman's Guide. It's free. Go to my website. Also, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am going to be giving away Starbucks cards once a month to all my viewers on my YouTube channel. I'm going to pick one blessed uh, viewer for a Starbucks gift card. I love Starbucks. I love their coffee. And also, I also give away prizes randomly for subscribers to my magazine. I gave away a JCPenney card, gift card, not too long ago. So, I love you ladies. So, stay in touch. And I hope to see you at the 2016 Golly Women's Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Right Angel Church of Christ. Go to my website for more information. I hope to see you there. Make sure you register. And I want to see you there. Remember, it's free entry, free food, and free entertainment with recording artist Tiffany Malone. She is going to entertain us with her beautiful voice. I, I, To me, she reminds me of Gladys Knight. She looks a little bit like Jodie Watley, but that, that girl can sing. She can blow. I just, she's so gifted, so talented. So, love you ladies. May our Holy Father in Heaven continue to bless you so that you may always be a blessing wherever you go. I love you. See you later. Bye-bye. Ladies, would you like to please God and have your heart desires fulfilled? Of course you do. We all do. It's human nature. Therefore, I encourage you to get a copy of my newest book, The Golly Woman's Guide to Inner and Outer Beauty. This book will help you discover God's good and perfect will for your life, show you how to lose weight and keep it off the golly way, help you find a way to golly man, and give you tips to keep your marriage strong, and much more. If you are a church leader, a Bible class teacher, I highly recommend you get a copy for the women in your congregation and for your ladies' Bible class. It will really save them a lot of heartache and trouble in life and help them be a better Christian and a godly woman. Did you know books make one of the best gifts to give to a person? The reason they make excellent gifts is due to the fact that books, just like the Bible, has the power to change lives. I personally give them as gifts all the time, and I encourage you to do the same. The Golly Woman's Guide to Inner and Outer Beauty is available at all major bookstores. But if you make a minimum donation of $25 to my women's ministry, you will receive an autographed signed copy by me and other free gifts. You can order a copy online at thegollywomansguide.org, and this book will greatly bless you and your life. Thank you so much for listening. See you later. May God, our Holy Father in Heaven, continue to bless you so that you may always be a blessing wherever you go. Bye-bye.